To be effective in any programming language, you'll need effective ways of storing data. In this video, you'll learn about the list data structure in Python. For those of you with experience in other programming languages, a list is similar to ArrayList in Java or Vector in C++. This just means it is resizable and has an array implementation underneath the hood. So, by the end of this video, you should be able to use lists to store data, iterate over lists using loops, and recognize some common list functions. Let's start by creating a list with the values 11, 22, and 33. Here, we create the list and then check that it is holding what we expect. List elements have indices which, like strings, start at zero. Here's a visual representation of our list in memory. Based on this, if I ask for the element at index 1, I should get back 22. And that's exactly what happens. What if I try to access the array off the end, like this? There is no third element, so if we ask for this, we'll get an error. Suppose I want to print all the elements in the list. I likely want to iterate over the list using a loop. So let's do that. By saying for i in list, I'm asking for each element in the list, and I can just print that value. And here we get back the values we wanted. For those of you more familiar with C or Java, you could also write this loop like this. Here, I'm letting i be an index into the list, and letting i go from 0 to the length of the list, which is 3. Notice here that len, the len function, returns the length of the items in the list. As a result, the for loop will then iterate over 0, i is 0, i is 1, and i is 2 before stopping. As it is printing the element at index 0, 1, and 2, it will print the same values as above. For those of you with a background in other iterative languages, the second loop may seem more familiar, depending on your programming style. But I encourage you to use the top loop, as it is less error-prone and more readable. Unlike strings, you can change the contents of the elements of a list. Here, we're changing the value at index 1 to be 95. Let's check to see if that did what we'd expect. It did. So one of the nice features of our lists is the ability to manipulate values in that list. I said at the start that lists are resizable. This means that we can append values to the end of the list. Let's see how this works. We'll start with our usual list. Like before, this has three elements. Using the append method, we can add an element to this list. Here, we'll append an element with a value of 44. Visually, this translates to, to adding the value 44 at index 3. Let's check the contents of this list after we've used append, and we'll see that the element 44 was, in fact, added to the end. You can add elements, but you can also remove them. First, the pop method. We create our standard list now with the four elements. If we call pop on the list, it will return and remove the element at that location in the list. Here, we're asking to delete the element at position 2. This will return the element 33. And remove the element from the list. It will then shift the values in the remainder of the list over by 1. So our new list will have three elements. Let's check. Yep, we effectively removed 33 from the list. In the last example, we used the pop method to remove an element using its index. Now, let's remove an element by its value using the remove method. Let's remove the element whose value is 33. This will remove 33, and like pop, it will then shift the values in the remainder of the list over by 1. So our new list will be those same three elements as before. Depending on what you're doing, it will be easier to either use pop or, or remove. Sometimes, you'll want to merge two lists. If the merger simply involves adding one list to the end of the other, you can use the method it stands. Let's set up two lists. Now, let's call the extends method to make it so list2 is added to the end of list1. Great. This did ju just what we'd expect. 
be careful not to mix up append and extend. Append adds an element to the end of the list. Extend it spends all, appends all the elements from one list into the other. If you accidentally use append with a list parameter, this is what happens. You get a list of four elements. The first three are integers, and the last is a list of three integers. This is a pretty common mistake, so be careful. Often, you'll be working with, through two lists at the same time. To do that, you can use the function zip. So let's create our two lists again. Suppose I want to print the first element in each list, then the second element in each, and so on. To do that, we can do this. When we, do, when we use zip, that creates a pairing of two lists. When you ask for x, comma, y in zip list list2, you'll get back the following x, y pairs. We don't have to get into the details now, but just remember that if you want to work through multiple lists at the same time, zip can be pretty useful. We've just gone over the more common methods to use with lists, but there are plenty more. For example, did you know that you can slice lists just like you do with strings? If you want more examples, be sure to check out the doc documentation. Next, we'll do a quick quiz.